or another term that we constantly hear is the term emergent property and it has become kind of common coin when people speak about consciousness uh, you know both lay people and scientists they would say well consciousness is an emergent property of matter now what are we to think of this term and what is actually meant let's say scientifically speaking by emergent property well first of all if there are such things and i don't believe there are but emergent properties would be a brand new kind of property that is totally different than mm. any of the properties that characterize the base from which it emerges. And when the base reaches a certain level of combination and complexity, something entirely new that never existed before appears. So emergent properties are brute facts for which there is no explanation. Mm -hmm. or otherwise, because if you could explain why they appeared by appealing to some features of the base, the, the highly organized base, they would no longer be emergent. You could predict that they would occur based on your knowledge of the underlying base. But one of the characteristics of emergent properties is that they are supposed to be in principle unpredictable from an exhaustive knowledge of the underlying base structures. That's why they're, emer they're, they're literally brand new and there's nothing about the base that will tell you one way or another that they should appear. The only way we learn to anticipate their appearance is by observing repeated times when matter reaches a certain level of complexity and we see the property. All right, but that is only correlating them. It doesn't explain anything whatsoever. Yeah. So I think that the, an appeal to emergent properties is not a solution. It's a name for the problem. Uh, it is slapping a name on what is utterly problematic. And here's what's problematic. How can you get something from absolutely nothing by just rearranging the nothing? In other mm -hmm. words, if, if matter is, is what uh, a, an ideal chemistry and physics and neuroscience tells us it is, it is utterly bereft of consciousness or the potential for consciousness. Are you telling me that brute matter without any potentiality for consciousness can be rearranged and all of a sudden, presto, this whole new thing that has never existed in the history of the world until the first sentient being evolved pops into existence? No, 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 no. That's getting something out of nothing. And that's what, and that problem is why more and more uh, non-theists are moving to panpsychism. And they're abandoning strict physicalism because they acknowledge, like David Chalmers, they acknowledge that if you're a strict physicalist, you're getting something out of nothing, and that's completely impossible. So they've started saying all, all individual pieces of matter have their own little consciousnesses, uh, these little attenuated, maybe not full-blown con. Maybe an electron isn't aware it's an electron, but it might have an awareness of attraction towards protons, for example. <laughs> So then when you bring all of these little pieces of these atoms that have their own individual consciousnesses together, you get the emergent property because you're not getting something out of nothing. You're getting the actualization of something from potentiality that's already latent within, within matter. The problem with that, as Chalmers himself admits, that has never been solved is the unity of consciousness. How can you get a unified being by just adding together billions of little parts that have their own consciousness. You know, there's a difference between 80,000 people watching a soccer match, <laughs> each, each of them having their own what it is like to be aware of the soccer match from their seat. That's very different from there being one overarching unified what it is like to be aware of the soccer match that is over and above each individual member of the 80,000 people. When, when Suppose that you brought 80,000 people together to watch a soccer match, and they all put glue on their hands, and they all held hands so that they were, for the rest of their lives, stuck together into one structure. 
Now we've got it, a structure, let's call it structure S, that's composed of 80,000 individual people. I assure you there is no what it is like to be S. There yeah. is no what it is like to watch the game from S's point of view because there is no self over and above the individual 80,000. The same thing with panpsychism. You can't get a unified self. So emergent properties are problematic because they involve getting something for nothing and they do not explain the unity of consciousness. They, the, you can't explain the unity of consciousness by just having <clears throat> being a, a crowd, in my case a brain with billions of individual parts, each having their own visual sensation of a different part of my visual field. There's no one thing that unites it all into one experience. Yeah, so let me just ask back on this panpsychism. It, would it be accurate to say that it simply kind of scales the problem back or moves the problem back from, you know, not talking about, well, an arrangement of atoms giving rise to consciousness, but simply, again, consciousness somehow being latent in, you know, simple pieces of matter, which, again, there is no evidence for that in the first place. Well, that's right. And, um, yeah. No evidence, whatever, but it's an attempt to try to solve the problem of the origin yeah. of consciousness without appealing yeah. to God. Because yeah. if you have it, the beginning was the Logos, then you start your ontology with consciousness, with a conscious yeah. being. So you don't have any problem with how subsequent conscious beings could appear. But if you say in the beginning with the particles, you're in deep trouble. Yeah. Uh, and to, to, evolve, to avoid that, you try to say, well, in the beginning were the... <laughs> The, the latent conscious particles. <laughs> no evidence for that. And in fact, it raises problems of unity and all sorts of things.